Lesson 4.4, Distributive Property. The distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products. So multiplying the sum of 1 plus 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 4. They both equal 8. We can break it into 2 times 1 by distributing this 2 to the 1 and adding, because there's a plus sign there, 2 times 3. 2 times 1 is equal to 2, and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. We can add the 2 and the 6 together to get an 8. So multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and adding the products. See? So you can think of the distributive property as a mother bird distributing food to each of her little baby birds in a parentheses nest. She gives some to that one and she gives some to that one. She's distributing. Distribute means to give some to each separately. So if the two was the mother bird, it would go to the one and it would go to the three. We'd have two times one, which is two, plus two times three, which is six. We add the two plus six and we get an eight. Bob bought six new fish for his aquarium. He paid $7 for each fish. How much money did he spend in all? So we've got six fish. They each cost $7. We can circle the important numbers. How many fish he bought and how much he paid are the important numbers. We need to find six times seven dollars. We can use the distributive property to solve the problem by breaking apart the seven dollars into five dollars plus two dollars. We can make an array to show six rows, we have six rows here, of seven. There's seven in each row. We can break the $7 into a $5 plus $2, so now it's a 5 plus a 2, and we have smaller numbers to work with, don't we? Instead of 6 times 7, we now have 6 times a 5 plus 2, and we distribute this 6 to the 5 and the 2, and we can rewrite 6 times 7 as 6 times 5 plus 6 times 2. See, we're multiplying the 6 to both of the add ends. 6 times 5 is equal to 30. 6 times 2 is equal to 12. We have 30 plus 12. So 6 times 7 is equal to 42. It's very important you remember to put the dollar sign because we were talking about money, weren't we? So Bob spent $42 in all. Now, we could have broken the 7 up into a 1 plus a 6 or a 3 plus a 4. And because we can add in any order, we could have put 6 plus 1 or 4 plus 3, couldn't we? We still would have had the same amount, $42. For 4 times 9, we can break the 9 into a 5 plus 4. Then multiply 4 times 5 plus 4 times 4. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. We add that to 4 times 4, which is equal to 16, and 4 times 9 is equal to 36. And we also could have taken the 9 and broken it apart as a 1 plus 8 or 8 plus 1, a 2 plus 7 or a 7 plus 2, or a 3 plus 6 or a 6 plus 3. And it still would have worked. We still would have gotten 36 as our product. For 6 times 9, we can break apart the 9 into a 5 plus 4. Then we can multiply 6 times 5 plus 6 times 4. We broke the 9 into a 5 and a 4. Now we have 6 groups of 5 and 6 groups of 4. 6 times 5 is equal to 30. 
6 times 4 is equal to 24. We add 30 plus 24 and get 54. 6 times 9 is equal to 54. We have to add to find the total product when we use the distributive property because we are breaking apart the objects in each group. We need to add them back together to get the total product. 5 times 7, that's 5 equal groups with 7 objects in each group. We can split the 7 objects into 3 objects in each group and 4 objects in each group. We multiply them by 5, the 5 equal groups, we have 5 times 3 plus 5 times 4. Here we have 8 times 7. It's equal to 4 plus 4 times 7. This time we broke apart the 8 groups. This time we kept the 7 in each row, but we broke it into 4 rows plus 4 rows. 8 times 7 is equal to 4 times 7 plus 4 times 7. That's equal to 28 plus 28, which is equal to 56 when we add them together. So make sure you memorize all of your multiplication facts through 12 before fourth grade. You want to be able to know your 12 times table and all the ones lower. And you can start with the easy ones. You can start by memorizing the zero times table and the one times table. Then memorize the twos and the fives. Then memorize the tens and then go back and memorize the fours and the sixes and the sevens, eights, and nines, okay? Here we have four times six. That means we have four groups of six. We can use the distributive property and write four times three plus four times three. It's four times three plus three. We split the six into a three plus three, see? Here's the six and now it's a three plus three. 4 times 3 is 12, plus another 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. 12 plus 12 is equal to 24. So 4 times 6 is equal to 24. And when you have multiplication problems, it might be easier for you, if you don't quite them have, have them memorized yet, to break one of the factors up like this and add the products together. If you don't have your 8 times table memorized, break the 8 into a 4 and a 4 and try to do it that way until you get them memorized. The distributive property says that multiplying a sum by a factor is the same as multiplying each add end by that factor and adding their products. So it's saying that if you're multiplying 4 times 6, it's the same as multiplying 4 times 3 plus 4 times 3 because 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. See if you can break a factor apart into some add-ends and do the distributive property and find the product on your own. I hope you're having a really good day. I believe in you and think you can do this, and I'll see you next time. Bye.